what's going on there folks good morning good afternoon it is the earth master back here on this thursday july 13th 2023 it's about 11 50 a.m here along the west coast uh, latest activity looks like a 1.3 into the area of california uh, before we jump into earthquake activity i want to show you guys uh, this beautiful feature here on the sun this massive prominence that's kicking off on the northwestern edge of the sun beautiful um, if this thing were to blast off, it's not going to be or directed, obviously, but it is uh, just a absolutely stunning image there of this um, beautiful prominence around this sunspot area on the northwestern limb of the sun. Uh, you can also see it there on the um, UV filter. Uh, it looks like we're getting a little bit of flaring going on around that prominence area as well. Either way, uh, absolutely stunning. Uh, let's see what we got here for the magnetogram, which shows us the general um, complexity here of these sunspots. They're magnetic cores. Uh, looks like this area down south here, massive sunspots, still trying to uh, develop a, a different structure here amongst this region. But right now, it's uh, we'll just keep an eye on it. Not a whole lot of advancement from last night, but uh, still, uh, we'll keep a, definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, we got this massive sunspot region here on the northeastern quadrant of the sun that we're watching as well. It looks like a newer sunspot coming around the bend uh, for the days ahead. We'll def definitely keep an eye on these sunspot regions. Right now, there's still a 20% chance here for an X flare probability. Uh, M flare at 55, C flare around 99% probability here. Uh, no major coronal holes have faced this, so we're not looking at any major uh, space weather events potentially it looks like on the 15th we could see a little bit of enhancement um, on the uh the three day not not expecting much just a little um a little bit of amplification it looks like we're missing the uh imagery there but looks like maybe a g1 class storm on the 15th we'll continue to report back on that though uh numerous sunspots definitely numerous sunspots uh I just can't get over that uh, feature. It's absolutely stunning. Look at that. All right, uh, let's move on here to the earthquake world. Let's see what we got going on here in terms of earthquake activity. We definitely noticed a huge increase in earthquake activity here across Japan and the Philippine plate. That uh, is definitely a good uptick here. Uh, looks like we've seen quite a few fours, even a couple fives in there. The latest a 5.2 coming in pretty deep there into the uh, Izu Trench 437 kilometers deep that's going to be this earthquake right here. here here's the Izu Trench uh, coming in had a couple other deeper earthquakes out here as well with that 4.4 344 kilometers deep that was just up north here but uh, definitely seen a lot of deeper movement quakes here across the area that's a good sign here uh, that something could be brewing up here at the surface levels uh, in the hours or days ahead. We'll continue to watch these uh, regions for uh, further movement. As you can see, there's a little bit of further activity here on the EMSC globe uh, showing that activity. And also down south into the, it looks like about the Philippines southward into the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, still seeing quite a bit of twos and threes and uh, some fours in there as well. Uh, USGS picking up on a handful of those quakes. Well, that's kind of weird. Just jumped all over the place there. Uh, yeah, USGS reporting some of these quakes here across the area. A couple from today and uh, some from yesterday as well. But definitely a big noticeable jump in movement here across the northwestern corner of the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. We'll continue to watch that. I believe the Krokom Chaka Trench, though, is... Uh, fairly primed for a large earthquake. It's been a while since we've seen anything major up here. And that is a major subduction zone with uh, average, average uh, accumulated stress rates here, slip rate of about 83 mm per year. A little bit higher as we head down south here across the uh, trenches around the, uh, the Filipino plate. So we'll continue to watch those areas for some possible larger scale movement uh, we did see some earthquake activity way up north way up there off the plate boundary off the coast here of Russia 5.2 
earlier this morning, about uh, six o'clock or so. Also some activity here in, uh, well, outside the Norton Sound area. There's Solomon, Alaska, 3.5 within the last hour. Don't really see too much activity out there around Nome. Uh, in general, clusters, it looks like here across the Denali area, this is all very typical, although slightly elevated, uh, it looks like today across the region. Could have something to do with the uh, plate adjustment that's going on here across the northwestern edge. And uh, we'll continue to watch this area, though, across the Aleutian Trench for movement as well. Uh, Northern California, aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, this is hydrothermal operations there in full swing. Not really seen a whole lot uh, across the area today. Uh, maybe a, a little cluster going on here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone near Borrego Springs. And also another segment uh, up here seeing some elevated activity as well. Uh, 2.5 map and above just disappears all those earthquakes except for down south here south of the border. Seen a handful of uh, twos and threes. And looks like a four pointer there as well from yesterday. But uh, the only other... 2.5 or above is going to be this 2.6 there in Cobb, California, up the Cobb Mountain region. Hydrothermal operations. Uh, Yellowstone National Park looks like they've added a couple more earthquakes here on the map today. Um, nothing big, but we will. Let's go ahead and double check that uh, imagery there from the Yellowstone area. Stand by for a second. Make sure I got the most recent imagery. This is day number two of the small little earthquake swarm that they've had here at Yellowstone. Notice the earthquakes, uh, gonna be these spiky lines here. That's what the earthquake activity looks like on a general seismograph station. Um, and there's a handful, definitely a handful of uh, earthquakes here even today. Yesterday, uh, we've seen, uh, oh, I, I wanted to say about the same or maybe a little bit more Notice the uh, Maple Creek area showing uh, a little bit more intense yesterday compared to compared to today, but still uh, slightly elevated activity there at Yellowstone. The USGS not really showing too much movement here on the map, even though there's uh, definitely a bunch showing up. All right, uh, Oklahoma, goodness, what's going on out there? <laughs> whole bunch of movement looks like today. Uh, twos and ones all over the place. I'm sure quite a few of these are around some oil fields out here. Hennessy oil and gas fields. Uh, Sooner Trend oil field. Lots of oil pumping operations out there in wastewater disposal facilities. Same out here in Texas as well, outside of Pecos, Texas. Got one earthquake out here near Smiley. I already know what's out there. There's uh, uh, thousands upon thousands of um, oil fields out here. Really close really close to the uh, epicenter here all right uh, new madrid seismic zone let's see what's going on with this map there we go uh, showing some movement here today it looks like a handful of earthquakes oh this is a majority it looks like from yesterday but within the last 24 hour period two 1.8s and a 2.1 here in the new madrid seismic zone one lonesome earthquake there across the uh, mountains. All right, uh, let's see what else we got down here into the uh, northern east Pacific rise. A couple earthquakes from yesterday. Uh, one after midnight, looks like a 4.8. That should amplify conditions here across the uh, middle America trench areas. Looks like they're seeing a, a handful of smaller quakes there today. Some twos and threes uh, kicking off there on the earthquake 3D globe. Also getting a Pretty good cluster of movement here across the area of the Puerto Rico Trench. This is kind of leading me to believe that there's something bigger about ready to pop here across the uh, Puerto Rico Trench area. The reason I say that is because uh, we did have that 6.6 um, a couple days ago here, followed up by a 5.0 a little bit further away from that 6.6. And I think there was even another 4 in here, but all this strain is coming from uh, the Puerto Rico trench area. This is a, uh, a subduction zone area. Uh, this region does see uh, some large earthquakes historically. Of course, this Caribbean plate where the uh, Puerto Rico trench is uh, located here on the northern edge 
is just being pushed and shoved around and subducted over here to the west, of course. Uh, well, the Middle America Trench, <coughs> that's a Cocos Plate being subducted. Uh, but there's a lot of moving around with the uh, Caribbean Plate currently, but there's a, also a lot of strain, a lot of earthquake activity up here uh, across that Puerto Rico Trench region. Look at this cluster of earthquake activity up here. Uh, and I believe this is all kind of pointing towards the strain that has built up here for quite a while. It's been a, I don't recall the last time we've seen a major large earthquake out here, but when we see uh, earthquake activity off of the plate boundary, uh, followed up by subsequent swarms here prior to and after that uh, six pointer, uh, that's a good indicator that things aren't done yet. As uh, far as uh, earthquake activity goes in this region of the Puerto Rico Trench, so continue to watch it. <clears throat> continue to watch that. Not for sure what happened there again. That's the second time it's done that. I think my mouse is going haywire. Maybe. Kind of weird. All right. Well, let's move on here. Ghost in the machine again. South America. A couple fours from yesterday, and even one after midnight. Looks like Argentina area 4.2. Let's see what else we got here for the uh, South America region. Quite a few twos and threes out there over the last 24 hours, it looks like. New Zealand, handful of smaller quakes there. A couple threes showing up on the globe. Our quiet zone once again. Solomon Islands area, Fiji, Tonga, all quiet for now. Over here across the Mediterranean, some earthquake activity overnight, some twos and threes. Nothing big going on out there. Uh, currently, the Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet as well. Um, aside from volcanic activity in Iceland there. Let's see, I think that's about it, folks. So we'll definitely keep an eye on a couple different regions here. Western Pacific for sure. Um, it's just very active. A lot of deep movement here. Uh, over the last 24 hours so something is brewing in this area uh, but also we got the Puerto Rico trench we got to watch out here across this area could be leading could be leading to something much uh, much bigger let me double check here and see when the last well there's there's a potential of that thing seeing a mega quake out there far as the Puerto Rico trench goes but I want to look at just historical uh, 6.5 and above yeah, over the last, we can just go back the last 20 years, 23 years. Can't believe it's 23 years since the year 2000, Y2K. Goodness. That is crazy. All right, so just specifically here around the Puerto Rico Trench regions. A little bit up north here as well. I know we've had some other earthquake activity down here. Uh, but I'm just more concerned about this area of highlight. Um, wow. Hasn't really been a lot out here uh, in the last 23 years. We got one earthquake back in 2003, exactly 20 years from uh, this year. It was a 6.7, a little bit further down there. 41 kilometers deep. So not a whole lot. Uh, at least in the last, uh, you know, 23 years. I'm sure there's prior earthquake activity. In fact, historically, um, it will show us uh, movement out here around the Puerto Rico Trench is uh, quite high. Some large-scale activity as well. All right, uh, let's look at the Storm Prediction Center, see what we got for weather today. Most of it's up there in the northeast. I know they need some rain up there, and it looks like they're going to get some. Uh, an enhanced risk for severe weather, though, with a 5% probability of tornadoes uh, in that area. In the uh, highlighted 5% there, that includes uh, Saratoga Springs. Uh, a lot of New York in there, so just a heads up if you're out there today observing the sky. Also, uh, over in eastern Colorado, a little bit of potential as well, 5%. But uh, generally, uh, you don't have to be specifically in the 5% to see a tornado. You can see it in the 2%, which covers... Uh, a good portion of population out there so uh, just be on guard some hail threats out there it looks like right there in the hatched area 15 percent chance along with some wind events up there into the new york area 
So be on guard. Uh, looks like tomorrow a little bit quieter and the day after that as well. Thunderstorm forecast. There it is. Quite a bit of uh, activity potential today. The West Coast is cooking. We are underneath the influence of a heat dome high pressure dome and we're looking at some hot temperatures coming up here folks it's supposed to be only uh let's see what's my weather map say here it's only going to be uh 100 today 100 even uh and then tomorrow the heat starts cooking with 107 111 on saturday 113 on sunday so we're underneath an excessive heat warning currently uh set to take place it looks like this saturday uh so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a scorcher I'm, i think i'm gonna stay inside and just try to get out of the heat i was outside barbecuing and doing some yard work yesterday and then the heat got to me a little bit all right have a good one folks we'll catch you guys uh back here a little bit later tonight take care everyone peace out